Okay, so we're at that stage now where we're going to create our underpainting. Uh, I've gone ahead a few steps to make sure that I would have enough time for this video. Uh, just to show you, I'm doing a picture of my hero, Terry Fox. Um, it's kind of a small picture, but I really like this picture because it shows the values. And it's got very distinct shapes that I can use to really give you a good example of what a underpainting is. So I'm just going to place this up here. So I have a, a reference. I've already pre-drawn uh, Terry Fox and I have kind of already used my grab pencil to outline uh, some of the areas where I want my values to be darker uh, or lighter or some of my, my high tones, my mid tones, my low tones, that sort of thing. Uh, just to show you an example uh, that my portrait is following the rule of thirds. I'm just going to hold up this uh, piece of um, transparency foam and show you that above the forehead, the eyebrows, below the nose, and the mouth, or sorry, the chin, uh, it does follow all the rules. And you'll notice one of the rules is broken, and that's because Terry, is, his mouth is open a little bit. So it's going to throw off that last block of one third, just a little bit. No big deal, but all the rules still, still apply. So typically in an underpainting, we're going for simply uh, values and shape, just to get our the basics. Uh, what this does, it, it creates depth when you're adding on and building up your layers. Uh, so right now, I'll just grab a medium brush. I'm using a darker brown, like a tan brown, and a flesh color, so just simply two colors. Uh, again, to create my, my low lights, my highlights, uh, that sort of thing. So I like to work uh, dark, uh, sorry, light to dark. So I'm just gonna dab on some paint. Now this, you really don't have to be specific. You just can go wherever your low lights are gonna be and be generous because you can always make changes later on. Again, I'm working a little bit quick. Good. Again, I am blocking out specific areas that I want my low lights to be. I'm not really going for anything in particular, just to kind of block it in. As you can see. I'm not really trying too hard. Now, because I wanted to use the pencil on here, yeah, the pencil will show through. So be careful when you're doing this. You're going to want to make sure your pencil is barely visible. But for the sake of the video, I'm just making sure that I can lay this on here and show you. Alright, so that's just some basic stuff there. Now let's get into the darker tan color. Sorry, the darker yeah, tan color. And go over that again. So his eye sockets are usually... Oh, another one of the reasons why I chose this was uh, the emotion, the expression on his face. And since we're doing a uh, Baroque theme, I figured this would be the best one. So again, not really worried too much about what I'm painting. Mind you, yes, I need to pay attention to his facial features and through our... I kind of feel like Bob Ross right now, talking to the camera. I don't have any happy trees to paint, though. And again, I have the picture up here for reference, so if I make a mistake, which I'm really not too concerned about with my underpainting, um, that's okay. And you can use different sized brushes for this. Again, I am just simply doing this as a quick demonstration. I'm sure your artwork will be much, much better than mine. And I can't wait to see it, so.
He almost looks like a really, really interesting monster here. But that's no worry, no bother. This is going to help me create depth in my overall painting when I'm finished. Now with acrylics you do have to work fast. Uh, in some cases like mine I am just again for demonstration purposes blotting on going a little quicker than I normally would. you do your portraits just a few things to consider is uh, Karasuko or I always butcher that word light and shade know where your lights are coming from know where your your, uh, your 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 shades are coming from uh, super important Because Terry Fox is running, his hair is absolutely crazy. Now your background is going to be a jewel tone. We've discussed jewel tones already, and if you look on the board, there's some examples if you're unsure what a, a jewel tone is. But you've got that eye you can kind of tell sometimes even when you're painting an or when you're making an underpainting the image starts to come through even though it's just giant blocks of of paint if you've got that that good sense of what things look like in your brain you can you'll see it come through so don't don't panic if you don't see it already Because that's not the point. The point here is just to block out our areas, find out where our highlights or our, our values are, our high values, our low values. And then we later on when the paint dries, during the build-up process, layering will define more and more. So that's just a little bit of his crazy hair. And usually right here you can see on the, the bottom of his lip and his chin. I might have to work on his chin a little bit more. Hopefully you can see this. Check the camera. You can really see sorry, right where his lip is. Just a basic block. Looks like a rectangle. And where his chin is, it's kind of got this funky shape, almost like an oval. And it's right here. I mean, it's not too important, once again, to worry too much about detail because that comes later. I can't stress enough that we are simply going for value. So, essentially, if I was to take this and kind of spread it out like I'm doing now, I might be creating a mid-tone. And again, when I'm layering, I can always go in with a white and really highlight that one area when I'm doing my actual painting itself. So that's okay. I'm not too concerned about that. Now when I step, step back and I look through the camera, I know right now it's hard to see uh, what it's actually going to look like. But I think I have a pretty good underpainting. I'm going to move on to his shirt. Just move this out of the way here. And the shirt's white, so what I did with the, what I'll do with my flesh tone is just really block it out here, just to get my shapes. The pencil lines will come through, plus I also have a reference here, so I'm not too worried about where my darks are going to be. And for this purpose, I'm not going to worry about what's on his shirt. Because I, I can always come back and paint it in later. And I'm going to 
the stresses again. When you do yours, it'll be fantastic. Mine, I'm simply just trying to demonstrate. Okay, so I'm coming back in with the tan color, the darker colors. I've got some... It's hard to see, but he's got some, some folds in his shirt. It's more evident right around this area here. And if you do make a mistake and you're really uncomfortable with it, you can grab some paper towel and kind of rub it off. This is probably a good idea when you're creating your jewel tone background. Um, that will help with your... Sorry. Well, it'll help with um, making sure you have a nice, flat uh, background. I shouldn't say flat, colorful background. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Oh, let oh, me just touch a few areas here. I don't want any of the canvas showing through. Uh, not too much. And again, there's always, there's usually some shadow and some lighter values in between, or sorry, right up between the nostrils, which is okay. Let me just check my painting here. Yeah, still looks good. And again, uh, this is a picture of him actually running uh, his uh, Marathon of Hope, or For Hope. Um, so that's uh, it's kind of an important moment in Canadian history in regards to people with exceptionalities. So um, that's why I chose Terry Fox as my hero. So I know my, my it's not dry quite yet, but I noticed his ear, I missed his ear. His ear's a little bit lighter, so I'm just going to dab over that so I know his ear's there. And the dark color around that representing his black hair. Uh, and I'll do the same for the other side. It's not as prominent as the other one, but we get the point. And so far that looks good. And I think, oh, I'm not done yet. One more little splash to put here. And I think I'm okay with that. Oh. I'm a perfectionist when it actually comes to certain things, but and I'm here I am telling you not to be, but uh, when you're doing yours, it's a little bit different. And if you notice on, well, I know it's hard to notice, but on the actual picture that I have, these little tiny, tiny highlights in his chin, or his jaw, sorry, um, are very thin lines. And again, you can see I'm not too concerned uh, the thickness. It's just, again, values and shape. I can't stress that more for an underpainting. It's all about your values and shape. Okay. Again, I'm just simply touching up any areas that... Where the canvas is still showing, yours is going to be so amazing that you're not going to have to worry about that. There's a little bit of a... He's got bags under his eyes. He's been running for quite some time. All right, I think that's it. I'm pretty happy with it. Just going back and forth with my flesh tone and my tan color. To make sure that I put on there, just to cover up the canvas, I think. All right. And sometimes too, if if you if you're really brave, you can do something with uh, creating your your high your highlights and your low lights, and if you really want to go above and beyond, and you're really good with paint, you can kind of mix the two together and create a mid-tone. So uh, I'm not going to do that, but for example, if you wanted to, 
his cheekbones aren't as dark as his eye sockets. So you might you could go in there with another color. Uh, but for the most part, when you're doing an underpainting, it's really good uh, to stick with just two colors. And I think that's good. So I've got his nostrils, his mouth. Uh, yep. Yeah. I'm okay with that for now. Let me double check the camera, see how we look. Well, that's good. Hope you enjoyed this segment of painting with Mr. Williams.